$4,000 investment. Even though later on down, you know full well you're going to make more than that back. But because she's not on board, because she's not you know willing to back you and willing to be involved in the process, a lot of times I see how people get set up for failure and they end up buying a $3,500 dog, never got the spouse on board, and then turn right back around and buy a $2,000 foundation female for that male to go into. You pretty much set yourself up for failure. From that point on, once the pups are born, you're over here thinking you're selling $3,000 puppies, and next thing you know, you're selling them $1,500 or $1,000. Then what? You see, so I just want to give you that, uh, especially for your new breeders out there. Um, you, you know, if you go ahead and look at the bully community and you look at the kennels that are actually doing well, you're going to start realizing, uh, you know, if, if, if they are a team, uh, nine times out of ten, the kennel is actually doing very well. When, when it's a husband and wife, uh, wife together, you know, watch, looking at the same vision, for whatever reason, everything takes off because now you got two minds thinking alike, looking at things the way they need to be. And next thing you know, you don't have a wife objecting on a $4,000 purchase for a female in order to get your program to that next level. Marketing, marketing, marketing. Now, I, you know, you're going to hear me say marketing, and, and I'm telling you, marketing is important. Is it more important than the dog? I'm going to leave that up to you. To me, it isn't. But I will tell you this much. I have seen way too many dogs, champions even, that have zero to no marketing. And they're just stuck in a rut. They can't go any further than, than where they are at because nobody even knows where their, you know, what, what their dog is or what he's been able to produce or anything like that because they've never used you know, marketing as a tool to be able to say their story, to be able to show what the dog is able to do. So it's really important. Marketing is going to affect price you know, from the very beginning. Our brand already lets you know that all of our dogs are going to be genetically tested. Just with that alone, that's giving us an, an edge over many, 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 many other kennels because they're not health testing. So if you was going to spend, say, $4,500 on a pup, which is what our pups start at, and we're letting you know that our dogs are genetically tested and they're at, you're looking at another kennel that isn't, you might want to scratch your head. And even if they're selling their dogs at $3,500, you still may want to scratch your head. You may still want to go with an extra thousand just to make sure the genetic testing is there. If $4,500 for a breed quality female is good, isn't, let me know, fam. Just drop the comments below. Also, make sure to give me a share, give me a like. Let people know what's going on. I love to bring them into the conversation. You know, between if you're coming to the game and you're thinking about, you know, just being straight out cheap, this may not be the game for you. The bully game is not cheap. Um, also, you know, you got to make sure that your spouse is on board. I've had many people come into this game and God knows what they had to tell the spouse to get them to come on board, you know, how to promise the moon and the stars. And then next thing you know, you know, after they bought this excellent uh, specimen of a, of a female, you know, they, they, they either can't pay a, a decent stud fee to get a decent male to go to the female or can't buy a male pup. Because now you promised the, the, the moon and the stars to your spouse and your spouse is only thinking numbers. They're not thinking of a future investment or what it is that they can get out of breeding this puppy correctly uh, out in the future. So with that being said, make sure you get your spouse on board. Make sure they're seeing the same vision you are. This is not a cheap game. If you think you're going to get a $3,500 dog and you're going to turn around and, and breed it to a $2,000 dog and it's going to somehow you're going to sell some $5,000 dogs, you're only lying to yourself. It doesn't work that way, fam. This is uh, merely a race. Some of us are more ahead of you simply because we started before you did. And, and you, the only way that you can take advantage or actually make it up to where we are as far as time is by being able to buy you know cleaner versions of what it is that we've already been establishing within our blood and in order to be able to do that i would say you're looking at anywhere between 3500 to 4500 dollar range starting and you're probably looking at a six thousand dollar top off and, and we're talking about uh for breed quality we're not even talking about tries we're talking about tries you're probably looking at a little bit more than that um also, you know, you got Merle's and whatnot, and that, that, that would be more than that, but that's more market-driven. Market uh, speaking of the market, uh, you also got to keep in mind that one of the reasons uh, that, you know, uh, American Bully, the, the, the prices are so much higher is because there's marketing behind our dogs. 
Uh, you know, some breeds, they, they just don't have the marketing behind them the way that we do. Uh, our dogs are very attractive. They're very sexy to the eye. And therefore, you know, a, a lot of breeders and a lot of breeding camps, you know, they, they turn right back around and they market the dogs. And next thing you know, you know, you're buying into a brand. And that's really important because I know many of you have seen dogs. I've, I've said in the past in many of my podcasts and videos, the dog is a freaking train wreck, yet his pups are going for, you know, crazy amount of, uh, of dollars. I mean, forget 4500 they're starting at six eight, And then, you know, and, and, and you can't be upset at that. You know, you got to clap them for what they did, and that's great. Um, but you, you guys got to keep in mind, the brand does affect uh, the dog that you have, the exposure of that kennel, uh, the marketability, the credibility uh, of that kennel, um, you know, also brings value to the pup. You got to keep in mind, if you're looking to breed, I'm not talking about a pet owner, I'm talking about somebody that's looking to breed. This is not just a pup, it is also an investment. So it is an emotional investment, okay, because this pup is now your child, but it is also an investment as to who you're going to put to this pup in order to maximize, you know, the quality of what it is that you're producing. So, you know, I hope I've been able to break it down a little bit, a lot for, you know, for the new guys that are coming in, uh, because I get hit up all the time. And, you know, sometimes they have this, you know, and, and again, I'm not doing it to shoot anybody down, but, it, but let, let's just say they have a male with many flaws that was very inexpensive. I won't even put a number on that. And now, you know, you want to buy a female that's my show quality top of the line to be able to clean that up. And my question to you is, dude, you're just starting. You, you want to be able to be as clean as possible on both sides so that when you marry that together, you can get the very best of what they produce and get your program going in the right direction. That's essentially what it is, fam. So we're talking about prices, prices, prices. So basically, yeah, if you're looking at, at, at top picks, yeah, you're, you're probably looking about, uh, I don't know, somewhere around, uh, I don't know, 6 to 8K. Uh, you know, depending on the kennel's exposure, the more exposed that they are, the more marketing they have, obviously the higher the price. Um, but also, you're also able to turn around and say, hey, you know what, this is such and such as uh, son. Now, do I agree with that 100%? Not really. But at the end of the day, you know, there there is value in that. You know, I would have to be, you know, deaf, dumb and blind to be able to say that there is a value in that. There is a level of value in that. Uh, however, us as breeders, we need to be progressing into confirmation and not just be stuck in the whole, you know, marketing and, and, and vanity of the whole thing. You know, if you can marry the two together, that's truly where, where, where the price lies. So that's what you're looking at. So again, fam, we have pet quality pups. Uh, I get called all the time. Fam, we sell them for $1,000. When I identify a pet quality pup, I take them off the table. I go to QBN app and I pretty much just announce it. So, you know, you may be washing dishes one night and boom, out of nowhere, you're going to get a notification from QBN Kennels. Click on it. You know, I have a pet quality pup available if you want it. At that point, it's the time to jump in and contact me. It's going to be first come, first serve. Uh, at one point, we did have a waiting list, but it was way too big. Uh, and I felt it was unfair. So for that being said, you know, that's just the way we do it. Not just with pet quality. We also do it with breed quality and we also do it with show quality. I've had, I've had people approach me and I've had to tell them, I said, look, I understand that you could find an exceptional dog at $1,500, but show me a $1,500 champ. And, you know, again, it is very, very doable. But once the person starts producing uh, champs at 1500 pretty soon that price is going to come up and therefore that's why you normally are not going to be able to find them at that price is usually the people that are starting that they're going to be starting a little bit lower so basically bullyonomics is nothing more than the way it works is you have a breeder that has been breeding you get into this game thinking hey you know what i'm going to buy low and i'm going to sell high fam i don't know if you know this but this is not the stock exchange bro a lot of us breeders you know, we, we've been in this game, you know, from when where you guys are at as buyers, and we're now in this game, usually on the selling side. With that being said, you know, we've been able to see both sides, and we already know when you're trying to come at us with a particular angle. You know, I've had plenty of people try to come at me with, you know, their dog passed away or whatever, and, you know, even though it's a very 
difficult situation and I understand that they're going through that I'm not about to hand over a five or six thousand dollar puppy just to make you feel better so we need to keep that in mind you know before you guys contact us you need to make sure that you're not coming at an angle or anything like that and if you are coming at an angle make sure it's really really good because if I figure out you are like a lot of a lot of breeders do I'm just simply not going to sell to you and a lot of breeders actually you know come in with the same mindset because it's almost like a, like a you know we're just tired of, of the cat and mouse game at least for us here at QBNK you know we're going to price a pup this is what it is you either take it or leave it we don't negotiate uh, it, it's just take it or leave it if, if you decide to leave then you know we got somebody else in line that's willing to take so I'm just giving you a heads up because I've been written to by a lot of you that you missed out on on higher picks and whatnot and I've actually reviewed the notes and this that and the other and you know several of you have written an entire you know book or two and as to why it is that I need to come down on price in order to be able to accommodate you uh, based on whatever uh, I'm just giving you give me two straight fam uh, I'm not gonna accommodate to y'all uh, the bottom line is uh, it is unfortunate if you've lost a dog but with that being said, you don't need to have a five or six thousand dollar designer dog to make you feel better. You could always go down to the pound, get yourself a fifty, sixty dollar pup, and you could actually save their life. And more importantly than that, they might end up saving yours. So what establishes price? So let me give you a hypothetical. So you have a breeder who's been breeding for ten years to have an established bloodline. Okay, an established bloodline that people know. It's real important. That brings a lot of value. The eyes are already on that kennel. They're already seeing what's going on. So therefore, you know, you're attracted and you want to go ahead and get a pup from that from that breeder and you do. But now you're trying to feed off of his marketing by saying this is such and such as son or such and such as daughter. And that's great. You can do that. But that's not going to take you too, too far. At the end of the day, your dog's going to have to establish his own story through pedigree showing that they were able to produce and that their offspring were able to produce and so on and so forth and they either were clean or they were able to produce the traits that the people were looking for or the market was looking for and therefore that upholds your price so keep that in mind fam just because you're getting a puppy from a big name kennel does not necessarily mean that that puppy now all of a sudden is going to be you know, as popular, say, as, as, as the sire on the original kennel. Now, it may happen. A lot of times it happens whenever uh, you have a pup that actually does phenomenal and, and looks as good, if not, if not better, as a sire. Then that kennel may decide to go ahead and, and back him with marketing because obviously it is their blood that's actually uh, evolved into this um you know correction that we're seeing and therefore you know they they, they want to bring that in but all in all each person has to do their own marketing and based on the marketing and what you're seeing in the dog it's going to establish a price credibility credibility man i can tell you uh it has been so many times you know back in the days when i was looking to to use a stud even recently i was looking to use a stud outside of my kennel and you know the very first thing that I research is is this particular breeder credible now obviously I don't go to the breeder and ask them that because they're gonna tell you they swear that they are but what I do do is I do my research and I see whatever posts whatever reviews have been had and I start seeing people's stories and if it's I start seeing you know three four five six ten of the same stories uh, pretty much is an in, a clear indicator that you know there's something that's you know been going on and therefore uh, at least in my eyes I'm not doing any business with that breeder this will bring your value down faster than anything else word of mouth bad business if you're a bad business fam price is just pretty much gonna drop you also got to keep in mind that females hold more value so you may find that you have a second pick male here going for say I don't know 5500 but the second pick female will be going for 6k and the re and the reason for that is there's more of an emphasis on the female they're actually they actually go the fastest whenever I open up a litter they they just fly off man your price is relative fam it's relative to the breeder that you're going to and it's relative to you where you're at you know if you're brand spanking new you're going to pay the price if you're looking for solid foundation okay if you're looking for cheap 
I can tell you right now, this is not the game to get into looking for cheap from the beginning. Because you're going to find it around a year from now. You're going to be contacting me to do a consult. I'm going to let you know you got a pet quality dog on board. And then you're going to turn around, probably spay and neuter, and go get yourself another foundation female. So this is why I'm telling you right now, cheap is not the way to go. If you're starting out, you need to get yourself foundation. Now, what is a foundation female? A foundation female, in my opinion, is a female with no more than one flaw on her. Everything else pretty clean that you could breed to with a cleaner male in order to produce, you know, cleaner offspring. At the end of the day, as a breeder, what you want to do is progress with every single generation. This is what's going to lead to get having name recognition, people realizing that you know what you're doing. It also goes along very well with your marketing. You're able to, to point out where you were, say, two or three years ago and point out where you're at now. People can see the evolution. And when they see the evolution, the price is on track. At the end of the day, what the new buyer is trying to buy is time. Okay, that's really what you're trying to buy. Any dog, any dog on this planet could be reproduced. It's just a matter of how much time do you really want to put in to be able to reproduce them. Are you willing to wait 20 years to be able to reproduce a dog that could, you know, you could probably pay an extra $2,000 and have it now? And that's basically what sets, what sets the market. Whenever you're buying American bullies and you're looking to breed, whenever you're looking to buy a dog, you're looking to put in an investment in that dog. Therefore, this is one of the main reasons why females, and I've said it before on many other, uh, both videos and podcasts of mine, Females, at least for me, in the model and the way that I do things, they hold a higher value. Uh, I find that the female, uh, you know, she's the one that has the mitochondria. She usually sets the dog's metabolism. Therefore, I feel that even though on paper it's 50-50 as to what the male uh, puts on the table and the female, I feel that the female actually puts a little bit more, maybe an additional 5 or even 10%. Now, this is just me. This is just me based on my experiences. But I will tell you, out here in the market, females will always run an extra three or five hundred dollars at the same pick level as a male. Now that I'm talking about picks, let me just break down how it is that the market usually works uh, as far as picks, because it definitely affects price. Uh, you usually have, you know, first to fourth pick on the on the male side and first to fourth pick on the female side. The higher the pick, obviously, the higher the price. And this is mainly because you're able to choose amongst more options and therefore you have more of an ability to be able to get what it is that you're looking for. Now, if you don't know what you're doing and you're out here trying to get first pick, um, I really recommend that, that you check yourself, man. Go, go, go watch some QBN educational videos. Try to get as much confirmation information down because I have been approached by many people that know nothing uh, as far as confirmation and they want to get a first pick off of me uh, I don't sell it because I don't sell uh, first picks But with that being said, I almost feel like I should have because it would have been a financial gain for me And this person nine times out of ten probably was not going to be selecting the best pup So keep that in mind, especially if you're a new breeder How much should you be paying for a foundation female or a foundation male now? I remember last year I made a video and I spoke about a uh, breed quality 2500 with a 4000 top on a show quality pup. Now this is absolutely what I meant at this time at that time and that was mainly on a two tone color dog. I wasn't talking about Tri and definitely I wasn't even talking about Merles. With that being said, you also do need to take into account other things such as the marketing behind the breeder that you're dealing with because that's going to add value to the pup that you're getting. How many times do you not go online and all you see is this is such and such a son or such and such as daughter and the dog actually holds somewhat value or more value than it normally would because it has a name brand attached to it. With that being said, you need to take that into consideration. <music>